All right, welcome back. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at how to add in more events that you would most likely use in a game here. So now that we have a layout here and we now have a player, let's take a quick look at what we can do to, for example, let's say um, spawn another object here. So let's go ahead, let's add in a new object type and we're gonna add in a sprite and that sprite here, well, we needed a name, and we'll call this, um, we can just simply call this enemy here. And this enemy will make smaller, more like 50 by 50 pixels. Push OK. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make it, an, well, a nice red color. Okay, there we go. So we now have an enemy here. Now what we want to do is we want to spawn this enemy somewhere along the um, uh, in in the actual game here okay so how do we do that well let's take a look at a system event that is really important now there's two system events that are the most important concepts in game development and we're gonna be dealing with one of them right now okay so the two ones that we have um, are the start on start of layout okay and you can see that we have there's a whole bunch of these different um, layouts here but this is the one that you will use the most now this is exactly what it sounds like this little event will get called once and only once when the game starts okay so for instance if I wanted to destroy the player right I could do that and you can see that nothing gets put on the screen because the player was indeed destroyed okay so let's go ahead and let's spawn this enemy somewhere along the um, uh, a lot somewhere in the game here so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, create object okay and what object are we going to create okay so we're gonna create the enemy Okay, layer. Let's just put this on the player layer for now. Okay, very important that you get the layers right. Okay, so, and by the way, if you just type in the quote here, you can just put in player layer. Now, the x and y coordinates, uh, we can basically put somewhere here. Okay, so let's just put this at 0, 0 and see what happens. So, if we go ahead and push play, you can see that, well, it gets put at 0, 0. And this is where. Zero, 0 is now technically it's right in the corner here and um, for the most part uh, let's just double click on this here check the origin you have the origins in the center here so it's put on the um, put on the screen here now let's go ahead and let's put this somewhere let's say like 300 300 all right let's see where that puts it okay you'll see that well it's somewhere over here 300 300 okay so that way we can spawn the enemy pretty much wherever we want okay so let's say we wanted to spawn it in the center here so one thing that's really good to keep a mental note of are is the size of your um, of your game here in this case it's 1280 by 720 okay so if I let's say put this at 0 0 again right this is gonna put the player up at the top left corner if I put this at 1280 and 720 where is it gonna put it well you can see it puts it at the other corner here and by the way yes it is uh, being put at this corner here and the origin is being put here as well okay so there you go you can see that basically when you spawn something for example it's 12 um, 1280 we have something from 0 here all the way to 1280 and if you want to spawn something on the vertical axis it's we have something from 0 all the way to 720 right and everything in between are going to be the coordinates of what we're spawning Okay, and you can see these coordinates, by the way, if I click on the player here, 
you can see these coordinates here in the position here. So if I move this, just keep your eyes on this here, right? You can see that, you know, I can move this here, which is around zero. And then um, and for some reason, it's being locked. I'm not sure why it's doing that, but nevertheless, um, you can see here that over here, it's closer to 1280. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's take a look here at um, let's take a look here at uh, adding in uh, this uh, so, so, or the um, enemy here to a different or to a random location. Okay, so I'm going to add in the random, and you'll be using randoms a lot. And one of the things I absolutely love about construct, okay, is that when you add in the random here. Uh, you can see that it is a range, okay? So a range of random numbers to generate between zero, one less uh, value, okay? So if I put this between zero and comma 1280, it's going to, every time I do, I run the game here, it's going to put it somewhere along that x-axis, okay? So let's do the same thing here random and I'm going to put this in between 0 comma and then 720 okay now every time I run the game you can see that it is going to be different here now I'm just going to take this one step further here I'm going to add in a keyboard and I'm just going to put on key pressed now what I'm doing here is I'm testing something out right I'm going to be testing out the the keyboard function here. Okay, so if I push the word P, I'm just going to copy and paste this in here. So every time I push P, it's going to create one of these items here. It's going to create one of these enemies here all over the screen here. Okay, random between those numbers. That's it. Okay, so I'm just going to delete that for a second here. Now, generally, when you make a game, you want to have a margin. Okay, when you're spawning something, this is something that's really important here, okay? It's when you're spawning something, you don't want something to be outside the game. You you kind of want to have a margin here. And I'm just going to, um, you know, if I kind of do this here and just make the, um, uh, well, basically, if you imagine a kind of a, a margin in between the side and where you want to spawn, um, that is something that you want to do. So... The reason is, is that you don't want things to spawn over here. You want things to spawn kind of down here, okay? And you can you can do this. You can drag out one of these enemies here and see what the position here. So it's about 30. So you want a margin of at least 30. Now, if you delete that, you'll get that instance. And don't worry about that here. Um, you might need to uh, add, add that in uh, somewhere else. But let's go ahead and um, let's add in basically 30. And then you'd have to subtract 30 from this. That's where your math skills come in. Right? So we got 30. And then we have 690. Okay? So what this is going to do now is I'm just going to copy this and paste it in here, by the way, so we can kind of see that now, no matter how many times you put this here, right? It's, it's not going to be spawned outside of that margin. Okay. There we go. Now, by the way, if I <laughs> do this, it's going to spawn multiple ones at once, right? Because all that does is that whenever I push the word P or the letter P in this case, because I added this here, it's going to spawn six of these enemies. Okay. Now there's a better code way of doing that, which I'll talk about in another tutorial. Nevertheless, this is what the on start of layout does. It calls something once and only once when you um, uh, when the layout starts. And in here, we can spawn, we can do multiple things. And usually on the start of layout, you're kind of resetting the game for a new round. Okay, so that's usually what you're using this for. It's a super important uh, function. Uh, no matter what game engine you use, it will always have an on start of layout or on start of game, right? Very important concept.